In the paradigm of the emperors, Luffy is relatively new. He's like fresh off the printing press. But Luffy has been incredible so far with the end of Wano Country and of course in Egget Island where Luffy has been just a force of nature. In this arc, he has been absolutely outstanding. Particularly when he has a full stomach, he's been otherworldly. Luffy right now, he really does feel like a genuine bona fide emperor, a true Yonko. He is appropriately now in the ilk of these individuals that control the most dangerous part of their planet, the new world. The very part that the world government and the Marines have failed to dominate because of the existence of these immense pirates. And Luffy is one of these people in earnest. However, however, compared to his peers, how good is Luffy really? This obviously up for debate and we all know in the future, he's gonna get better and better and better. When it comes to his hockey, when it comes to his abilities, he's only going to improve probably exponentially as time goes on. But right now, at the very beginning of the final side of the story, Egghead Island, how does Luffy compare to Blackbeard, to Big Mom, to Kaido? I'll even throw in the Golden Lion Shiki to a prime Whitebeard, Eduardo Newgate, to the Red and Wonder Shanks, and of course, the ultimate yonk of all time, Bug E, the clown, and the man who will sit on the true throne, the man that will ultimately claim the One Piece and be the greatest pirate of all time, allegedly. <laughs> Here's the thing, we can go step by step, because I would say that Luffy still has a ways to go to really be at that level. Blackbeard, I would say is the starting point of the Yonko, but sooner rather than later, let's see after this arc, he will probably be stronger in my book than let's say Big Mom or Kaido. Very skittish, we saw Rayleigh, where Rayleigh pulls up and he's oh! So he has issues, he has a lot of cowardice, but he is very, very cunning. A lot of times his best moments are done off screen, obviously one, but a two, when he sneaks you, when he catches them off guard. He ambushed Law and his pirate crew going to Winter Island. He snuck in on Amazon Lily during their battle against the Marines. During Marine 4, he came at the very tail end when it was almost said and done. So Blackbeard is, for the most part, a sneaker. Not only you wear, but he's a swiper. Swiper, no swiping, he always swipes. However, it's not to say by any measure that Blackbeard is weak in combat. Even though he got shook by Rayleigh, Rayleigh did admit that he could not beat Blackbeard. And there's a very important thing that a lot of folks tend to forget. Blackbeard, he does counter abilities. Law did very well against Blackbeard when he had the Quake ability on only, but when the Yami Yami came into the fray, that's when we cut the off screen, boom, he winds up winning the fight. But the Yami Yami, in principle, should be able to counter a lot of the Gear 5 shenanigans. Hockey, in of itself, has a way of, let's say, fortifying the ability, bypassing the effects of the Yami Yami no Mi, but I can't say wholesale. Let's say to a certain degree, because Blackbeard himself also has very strong hockey too. The Gura Gura is still very, of course, threatening, but it's the Yami Yami that is gonna be the most threatening for Gear 5 Luffy and any version of Luffy that fights against Blackbeard. So, I still put Blackbeard over Luffy at this point in time, and in the future, he'll also continue to get stronger and stronger. Now, Big Mom, I do put relatively close to Kaido. And I'd argue that Big Mom is still gonna be an opponent for Luffy and Elbath. I see the themes, they're there, they're still strong. Tamir character ends up wrapping up very nicely in a trilogy ending in Elbath. And I would say come Elbath, she'll be stronger than we saw in Wano Country. Oda will finally let her do the things that she is capable of doing. She had Conqueror's Hockey Infusion with their tax when she went mother mode against page one, but very seldom do we see that against Kid and Law. Why? No idea. So hopefully in the future, we get to see a lot more of that with Big Mom. Big Mom didn't really lose to Law and Kid. All they could do was reposition Big Mom into the magma chamber ultimately, and even on the way down, she says, I'm not gonna die to this. And I believe her words, I definitely do. So Big Mom, I think is gonna be come back in full force stronger and and particularly when you keep the idea in mind that big mom was inside onigashima and that does matter for her powers because she herself said in 1002 that as long as you are in the open sky there is no escape 
Big Mom in the open air, on paper giving her homies, Big Mom is more powerful. And on top of all this, I do view Big Mom as either the tankiest character or number two. I think she's the durability queen to the point where if you have Luffy's Baj Rangun fully enhanced and so on versus a healthy 100 HP Big Mom, she will take the attack. She'll get wounded, of course, massively, but she'll keep fighting even after a Baj Rangun. That's my personal take, but folks, again, I think underestimate how powerful Big Mom is, particularly in the defensive categories, and defense wins you championships. After Big Mom is Kaido, Lance and Air. <laughs> Kaido, I think, is a very simple case here, where Luffy does beat Kaido in Wild Country. True, but it's only after Kaido has been through so much activity of the entirety of Wano Country. Even to this day, whether it's Kizaru or the Elders, no one seems to perform as well against Gear 5 Luffy compared to Kaido. Kaido had to go through, I mean, do I have to say it? Why not? He went through the scabbards, then Roof Piece, it was like the main target of the uh, supernova there. Then after that, went 1v1 with a fresh Conqueror's Hockey Infusion Luffy, then had to deal with Yamato, then had to deal with Luffy and Yamato and Momo. Then had to deal with Luffy 1-1 again. Then fought Luffy again as my gear five. It's like, dude. And he did all of this while levitating a huge island, Onigashima, which we do know took some toll because according to Yamato, Kyle was getting to the point where he couldn't maintain levitation of the island because he was starting to lose a lot of stamina. Kaido is nuts. He's nuts. And to me, Luffy, very similar to NL, only beats Kaido given the situation and the circumstances. What if Kaido wasn't levitating Onigashima? He could, let's say, in theory, do a bigger flame drum dragon, a flaming Bagua, or potentially still be conscious and active after taking the Bajran gun. That's very possible. If you don't have the scabbard fight and Kaido's more fresh, you can argue the same thing applies there too. Kaido was nuts. He was phenomenal, phenomenal. To the point where even the elders say themselves in 1044, we sacrificed our top agent, Guernica, and we made Kaido mad. Was it really worth it? Making Kaido mad, that, that's a no-no. And Kaido, I think, proved that in so many ways, because even at his condition, he was performing better against a Gear 5 Luffy compared to the elders and Kizaru on Egget Island. I could argue. Now, after Kaido, someone that I put over him on paper in my book, and that is the Golden Lion Shiki. I love Shiki. But Shiki was someone that ruled the seas back during Roger's day, along with him and Whitebeard, and at that point in time, a younger big mom. And Shiki, you could argue it's, you know, my bias, my wank, friend of fine, but Shiki fought against a prime Garp and a prime Sengoku at the same time before he was in prison in Impel Down. And in the process, half of Marine Ford was destroyed. Half of it in a 1v2 fight against two legends, Sengoku and Garp. Bro, Shiki, he's gotta be nuts. She, <laughs> in order to do that, in order to destroy half of Marine Ford under the watch of a prime Garp, and a prime Sengoku, you, you've just got to be otherworldly, bro. Shiki, to me, I think is powerful as hell. I can't say at prime Whitebeard levels, but I can say under, like slightly under prime Whitebeard. We even see Dunrock's flashback where Shiki is the only Rock's power member at odds with Whitebeard. So ultimately speaking, yeah, 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 I'm, bro. Shiki, I think, is him in so many ways. Once again, yes, bias, because I like Shiki a lot. Yes, Theory Glaze, true, obviously, but I can see him being stronger than Kaido. I can see it. And I don't think Luffy could beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Though, to be fair, based on we've seen the moves and so on, he's very ability-oriented rather than, say, hockey-oriented. But at the same time, again, that's just the movies. Like the other rulers at that point in time, so Big Mom and Prime Whitebeard and himself, along with, let's say, Roger, I can see him having Conqueror's Hockey and probably even Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, let alone very strong observation and arm and hockey. Him having a strong ability, I don't think would be enough 
for him to take on both Sengoku and Garp at the same time, knowing that both of them have Conqueror's Hockey, Garp with oodles of hockey, and Sengoku with a Mythical Zone ability, and still the Golden Lion Shiki could destroy half of Marine Ford under their watch. Yeah, to me, the signs are clear. I think he has strong hockey. And strong hockey would mean that he could definitely do substantial damage to even Gear 5 Luffy. How wise the fluff fluff ability that he has, the anti-gravity ability he has, I think it's just it's so versatile. Cheeky, prime, 1v1 against Luffy now, I got Cheeky. And Whitebeard in this prime is in the same camp too. We saw him and Roger, the sky split, so on and so forth. Clear signs that Whitebeard's hockey in his prime was absolutely tremendous. And the Girl Girl Know Me is for damn sure one of the most powerful abilities in the verse. It cannot be underestimated, the power to destroy the world, quote unquote. Whatever we see with Teach, Wiper in his peak with that ability alone could probably do a lot more. Though to be fair, Teach will get better with that, but I'm not too sure if Blackbeard right now, at this point in time, can do the exact same techniques and output the same level of power that a prime Edward Newgate could with the quick quick ability. Once again, right now, for the time being. In the anime, he does be Odin fairly thoroughly, but we do see in general that he did have, at that point in time when he was younger, better observation, armaments, conqueror's hockey. There is an idea that Whitebeard was going to try and save Ace with the conqueror's hockey pulse before Luffy did, but his heart kind of gave out for like a second and then he like coughed him more blood. If it's a younger, healthier Whitebeard, conquer his hockey pulses and have those dudes in the area just passing out, just imme immediately, absolutely. So even though Luffy has very, very good defense with his gear five abilities, that natural rubber body that gets strengthened, Whitebeard with the conquerors, conquerors hockey infused quake punches and attacks, I think can do a max amount of damage to Luffy if they hit dead on, for sure. And at that age, ideally has a tougher physical body and can definitely react to attacks better and dodge it more accordingly because he has better observation hockey, unlike what we saw with Squardo at Marine Ford. And to me, it always seemed like throughout the entire battle, Whitebeard was the strongest person at Marine Ford despite his old age and his health. And of course, knowing that he got stabbed by Squard before he even hits the ground at Marine Ford. Whitebeard still felt like he was the most dominant dude there. A souped up version of this Whitebeard, again, I think has Luffy's number. Whitebeard, I thought for sure, was the strongest guy at the Ford. That is until Monsieur Red Hair Wonder arrives. Ah, God King. Hmm. To me, Shanks is the closest right now to Goldie Roger. The freest person in all the seas right now. And in all honesty, in terms of combat, could be just as good, potentially even better than Goldie Roger. And the thing about it is that he has the feats and they're just otherworldly. And not just otherworldly in of themselves, but also against other top tier dudes. Against men who have three Billion Berry Bounties. An admiral and one of the top guys on the planet used this Captain Kid. These, these are just facts. These are just undisputable, undeniable facts. A stronger version of Kid after coming out of Wano Country. That version of Kid got devastated by Shanks. Not only that, but his partner in crime, Killer, was free fries on the side. It was a two for one special, bro. Kid and Killer, one divine departure. And keep in mind that the Red Force ship is docked at shore, and then the Kid ship is out at the ocean. Somehow, Shanks just covers massive ground, quote unquote. He covers massive water, and he's able to blitz from the dock ship all the way to Kid ship in the middle of the ocean. How? How fast is Shanks? Like, no. The power of Shanks, the the speed of Shanks, the hockey of Shanks. It's just unreal. The future sight. Better than even Katakuri's future sight, where he saw clear visions of nine or eight damn punks firing, destroying his weak-ass armada. 
Then we see with Green Bull from thousands of miles away. And Green Bull, well, Green Bull got shook from, from just so far away. We're talking about a regular ocean climbing the wall, the freshwater ocean, and then going in into the huge Wano country area. Oh, no, 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 no. The feats speak for themselves. And in terms of portrayal, Shanks, I think, is one of those cats, along with Blackbeard, that could potentially be the final fight for Luffy in the story. Honestly, honest to goodness. There is no One Piece character that gets wanked harder by a Chir Oda than Shanks. And Luffy, I don't think, is at that point. Particularly when Luffy, maybe not full HP, but particularly when Luffy had a Kizaru back and forth for some time, and even though Kizaru got White Star gunned, which is very impressive, the White Star gun versus Shanks' hockey from that far away, stun locking Green Bull was just, like Luffy was fantastic. Shanks was unironically like God tier. It was insane. It was insane. And as a Shanks fanboy, I love to see it. Absolutely I do. So in one-on-one fight, I can see Shanks predicting damn near everything that Luffy does with his future sight and then be able to negate a lot of what Luffy does with just sheer hockey. Cause I'll argue that right now, Shanks has shown equal to the elders. He has shown definitively the best hockey feats in the verse. Observation, Conquerors, Arma is probably there too with Divine Departure. And so if it is there, then you can simply assume Arma hockey as well. Where in at least two categories, probably three, Shanks has the best feats and it's by far and away, like not even close. No one right now is in this man's periphery, not, not a single person. And it's crazy, it's crazy. And enraged Shanks is like an enraged Goldie Roger. And an enraged Goldie Roger could like devastate countries as Garp said so way back when. That's how I see it. Now, of course, there's that one crazy mad lad dark horse called Buggy. Mm -hmm. Even though Luffy's nuts, he has that toony zany, where the hell? Buggy, you could argue he been had that. Oh! Buggy Ben had the stupid stuff. And ultimately, we will see Buggy inadvertently manipulate causality and somehow, someway, live and get the W. <laughs> when it comes to all these characters, eventually, even Buggy, they will be weaker than Luffy. But right now, right now, I think that Luffy is weaker than all of them outside of Buggy and Ernest. Let's say in the next arc, by then, he'll be stronger than Kaido and Big Mom. That is my stance. Let me know yours though. Let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. If you enjoyed what's content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to join the notification squad. I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side. See you, bye bye.